Hey everybody, this is Mitchell from Cherry Audio. In this video, I'll be talking about the new DCO60 module for Voltage Modular. It's a fully self-contained polyphonic synthesizer with up to 16 voices of polyphony and normalized CV and gate connections. This means that other than the master outputs, you won't have to patch any cables to use it, but we'll talk more about that later. In case the appearance didn't give it away, DCO60 was inspired by the beloved Roland Juno 60 and 106 polysynths. People loved the Junos because they were affordable, easy to use, and sounded great. Though they only had a single oscillator voice architecture, Roland's beautiful chorus circuit made up for this by adding a giant lush stereo spread, and we've included a spot on emulation. Because of their unique digitally controlled analog oscillators, the waveforms from a Juno look and sound different than any other analog synth, and as you'll see, we modeled them with incredible precision. Overall, we went to possibly insane lengths to get every detail exactly right, from the oscillator waves to LFO speed to the control ranges to everything. So let's dive in and check out DCO60 from stem to stern. Now before we delve into all the individual sections of DCO60, I want to talk about patch cord normalization and exactly what that means. Voltage Modular 2 has a feature where modules can be programmed so that patch cords are automatically connected to them, otherwise known as normalization. So in other words, when I drag a brand new DCO60 into Voltage Modular, you don't have to hook up CV and gate connections at all to play it. The only thing you have to hook up are the master outputs to the main outs to host. So as you can see, I'm playing it with nothing connected to the pitch in or the gate in. So for all intents and purposes, voltage behaves as if it has invisible cables plugged in under the hood going from poly pitch to the DCO poly pitch input and the poly gate output to the envelope poly gate input. It behaves the same way if I have cables, but I can just unplug them and I don't need them. Similarly, DCO60 has its own normalized connections internally. That means that the oscillator mix out is going to the high pass filter input and the high pass output is going to the low pass input, and the filter output is going to the VCA in, and so on. But these are all internally normalized connections, so none of these cables are necessary. However, if you want to use the section separately, let's say you wanted to use the VCF with a completely different oscillator, you could do that. So normalized patching really gives us the best of all worlds. You get the ease of use of a pre-patched synthesizer, and you get the power of a modular synth because you can override any of the jacks with a cable. So as mentioned, we went to a fairly large effort to ensure that DCO60 sounded as authentic as possible. So what you're about to see is an original Juno 106 on the left hand side of the screen plugged into an oscilloscope and that'll be coming out of the left speaker. On the right hand side of the screen is a DCO60 plugged into its own oscilloscope and that'll come out of the right speaker. DCO60 faithfully models the master clock and divider circuit architecture of the original Juno synth oscillators. Going over its controls, we've got range buttons. We have on-off buttons for the sawtooth wave. And the pulse wave. And these can be used individually or together. If the pulse wave is selected, the manual LFO switch selects how pulse width gets controlled. If the switch is in the manual position, then the pulse width gets controlled by the slider. If the switch is in the LFO position, then the LFO controls the pulse width, giving you pulse width modulation.
Moving along, we have a sub oscillator, which gives a fat square wave, an octave below, whatever the range setting is. We have a noise generator, which makes white noise. Ah, the delightful ocean spray. So now let's talk about all these modulation inputs down here. These let you do all kinds of modulation that goes way beyond the scope of a standard Juno synthesizer. So for example, I could take this mini LFO over here and I could plug it into the mod in of the pulse width and turn up the attenuator. And these attenuators are bipolar, so that means I'm getting positive modulation turning this way and negative modulation if I go this way. I can modulate the amount of LFO which is interesting because I'm actually modulating the slider level, so I get this wobbly kind of thing. The frequency CV input gives us standard pitch modulation. And these two inputs are pretty cool because this actually modulates the level of the sub, so you can do this kind of thing. Let's put this on the square wave. And it works the same for the noise. Rounding out our tour of the digitally controlled oscillator, we have poly outs all across the bottom for the waveforms, and these are not affected by the level sliders. So for example, I'll take the noise output over here and plug it into the filters, and you can hear that's full blast even with the slider on zero. Whereas if I use the mix out over here, it's affected by the slider. Now of course, the mix out is normalized to the high pass input, so I could get rid of this cable altogether. But the mix out is useful because let's say you wanted to use a different module altogether for a filter. You could plug this wherever you liked. Let's talk about the low frequency oscillator. Now it's a pretty straightforward affair, but it does have a couple of unique features. First of all, it can be used exactly like the original Juno synths where there's an LFO slider on the oscillator. And there's also an LFO slider on the VCF. But by using the output jack, you can use it with any modulation input you like on DCO60. It also has this delay slider, which is kind of nice. This isn't a delay in the typical sense of an echo. It actually delays the onset of the LFO modulation. That's a lot easier to hear than it is to explain. Let's say I've got my LFO slider turned up here for pitch modulation on the oscillator. If I push up the delay slider, you can hear that the modulation slowly creeps in. Now the thing to remember is that this delay setting is independent for each polyphonic voice. So it's kind of a nice effect because you can play sounds that begin with no vibrato and then the vibrato creeps in on each note individually. The other unique feature about DCO60's LFO is this mod wheel switch over here. And what this does is when it's turned on, it acts as a normalized connection between the mod wheel jack over here and the LFO, which doesn't really have a jack, but it acts like it does. Let me show you. You can see here that I still have the LFO fader cranked up on the oscillator. But with the switch in the on position, you're not hearing anything because the mod wheel is controlling the depth of the LFO. Of course, you could patch up something like this with the Mod Wheel Assistant module or other modules, but this makes it super easy to set up Mod Wheel Controlled Vibrato. You'll also notice that the delay slider goes dark when the Mod Wheel switches on because it would be confusing to have a delay when you were pushing up the Mod Wheel. In the CV section at the bottom, we've had CV control for the delay onset and for the rate. And at the bottom, we have the LFO jack that we talked about before that lets you route LFO output anywhere in DCO60 or to any module in voltage. DCO60 includes a high pass and low pass filter, just like the original Juno synths. But unlike the original Juno synths, the poly in and out jacks allow you to use them completely independently from each other, either inside of a DCO60 patch or in conjunction with other modules. As with the original, the high pass filter is useful for thinning out really fat sounds if you want something that's not going to take up as much room in a mix. Here I have the sub oscillator turned up for a really fat sound, and the high pass filter will thin it right out. DCO60's low pass filter is super accurately modeled and has a great tone to it.
It also self-resonates, which opens up a whole new world of tone colors. If you turn the keyboard tracking slider all the way up, it tracks the keyboard perfectly, which effectively gives you another sine wave oscillator. The envelope slider lets you do standard envelope modulation. And the invert switch allows you to invert the modulation. As mentioned earlier, the LFO slider is hardwired from the LFO section. And we already discussed the keyboard tracking slider, which increases the cutoff frequency as you play higher in the keyboard. And as with the other sections, there's a bunch of CV inputs, which give you CV control over the cutoff frequency, resonance, envelope amount, LFO amount, and keyboard tracking amount. And finally, we've got poly ins and outs on the high pass and low pass sections. And these are set up like a normal Juno synth where the oscillator outputs to the high pass input, the high pass out goes to the low pass in, and the low pass goes to the VCA. But because these are normalized, of course, you don't have to hook up cables. But what's nice about having these inputs and outputs is you can use the high pass and low pass separately with other modules. Or if you wanted to add extra oscillators with external modules, you could do that too. In this patch, I've added an additional poly oscillator. I've taken DCO60's mix output and plugged it into input one of the mixer. And then I plugged this extra oscillator into input number two. And I've taken the output of the mixer and plugged it to the high pass filter in, which will run it through the high pass filter and then to the low pass filter. Here's what it sounds like with DCO60's oscillator playing. And now I'll bring in the extra poly oscillator. And of course you could add as many oscillators as you like. Although they're separate sections, the envelope and VCA are closely related to each other, so I'm gonna talk about them at the same time. Now, as you probably know, the envelope generator controls the VCA. And in this case, we have a standard ADSR envelope generator. <laughs> And one thing that's unique about the Juno envelope generator is the release times can get insanely long. If you look here at the tooltip, you can see that it goes up to 24,000 milliseconds, which for you mathematicians out there is 24 seconds. So I'm just gonna let this decay for 24 seconds because the video was way too short. No, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna do that. So because the Juno and DCO60 only have one envelope generator, it does double duty. It can control the filter, as we demoed earlier with the envelope slider over here, or it can control the VCA simultaneously. Now that's usually how you're going to use it. And this switch over here lets you select between envelope control of volume or a simple on-off gate. And the reason you might want to put it in gate mode is if you just wanted the envelope to control the filter, but you wanted just a simple on-off type envelope for the amplitude. So if I put this in gate mode, you can hear that the envelope generator has no effect on the amplitude, as opposed to envelope mode. So let me show you how you might use the gate mode. I'm gonna turn the cutoff way down, and I'm gonna turn the envelope up. So this way we have constant volume when we play notes, but the envelope generator is still affecting the cutoff frequency. At the bottom, we have a CV in for the VCA, and that lets us do all kinds of amplitude effects, including tremolo, or if you're using an audio rate oscillator, super fast ring modi kind of things. Here I've patched the LFO to the VCA, and if I turn up the attenuator, you can hear tremolo. And in this example, I've replaced DCO60's LFO with an audio rate oscillator, which can get some really crazy ring modi kind of effects. Similar to the oscillator normalized pitch connection from the I.O. panel, the envelope generator has a normalized connection from the poly gate jack. So DCO60 behaves as if it's patched like this, but of course we don't need a cable because it's normalized. There's also a sustain pedal jack here, and we can patch this 
like so. This one isn't normalized, so you will need to patch it. Let me show you my cables. And the sustain pedal will operate like any other sustain pedal, where the sustain section of the envelope will remain on until you let go of it. And of course we have poly ins and outs for both sections, which allow you to combine these sections and substitute with other modules as we've discussed earlier. The Marvelous Stereo Chorus section has been recreated in all of its glory, and to demonstrate just how dramatic the chorus is, I've set up a really boring square wave patch. That's with no chorus. And that's with Stereo Chorus 1. And here's Stereo Chorus 2. 1 and 2 are almost the same, but 2 has a little bit faster modulation. Hitting both buttons at the same time gives a much faster effect, which is good for organ type sounds. It's not stereo, so you can definitely hear the difference in width. But this is how it works on a Juno 60 as well. The master section is very simple. It just has a volume knob, which allows you to make things louder and quieter. <laughs> and the tuning knob goes up and down a half step. And of course, we've got stereo outputs. And if you're just using the left output jack, then the stereo chorus will be monoed. The chorus signal also includes a standard mono input jack, which you would most likely use for routing signals from other modules. <laughs> 